Hello everybody. So today, cross country flight. We are flying from Burke Lakefront, which is where we're at, to uh, Youngstown Warren Regional Airport, uh, southeasternly heading there. And then we're going west to Akron Canton, and then northeast back to Burke Lakefront. So our uh, our heading on the sectional down to Youngstown Warren is 110, 110 degrees. Um, however, there is a magnet magnetic deviation of 8 degrees west. West is best. You add 8 degrees. So we have a true course of 118 degrees. And our winds, I believe, are 169 at 6 knots. 169 at 6 knots. So on our E6B there, we add all that up. Um, Basically, you set your uh, wind speed at the true at the true index, and then you mark up the wind degrees. So I always set my grommet here at 100, just because it's easier to add up. So I add up six degrees, and then you change the true at true index to your true course. So I put that at 118 degrees, which gives us a wind correction angle of two degrees that we add. So we are flying. Uh, our compass heading will be 120. Our Calculated airspeed is 115 knots. Ground speed will be about 100 and uh, 110 knots. So we have a little bit of a we have a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a headwind. Sorry, I don't know why that took me so long to. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the show on the road here. We're gonna do our pre-flight inspection. Actually, before we do any of that, we're gonna load our flight plan. So, all right, so we got our flight plan loaded. Um, I have what is this, about 117 nautical miles down to Youngstown. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just because I only have six waypoints, you're supposed to have one every 10 to 15 miles. Uh, flying between certain speeds, I I'm flying 100 and, 110 knots. You're supposed to have one every 10 to 15 miles, but there's not very many references. There's freeways, a couple lakes, and like one windmill that we're going to be using. Actually, there's one little river that we're using. The rest are all highways. Actually, 422 West kind of intervenes our path, uh, like the whole way down. It kind of like snakes through our course there. So, all right, no more stalling. Pre-flight inspection is performed. The only thing I have to do is get rid of this stuff. I like switching to this view. There we go. Okay, ground equipment. We will get rid of you, the tie downs, the pedo tube cover, the wheel chokes. And we are ready to go. My canopy's still open, but that's okay. It's a nice breeze. Oh, what did I do? Okay. All right, pedals adjust and locked. Um, can't really. I mean, I can adjust them, but it moves my view. Can't stand that. Why? Right, because it moves my view because it makes me taller. Um, parking brake set. Parking brake is set. Controls free and correct. So we'll look to our left on your stick down there. Just pretend you have an imaginary hand on there. If you put your thumb straight up on the stick, if you move the stick to the left, your left aileron should be up, and vice versa for the right. So, thumbs up, look to our right. Left aileron up, down, look to our right. Uh, up, down, cool. And the other flight controls feel correct. I'm just going to go ahead and look, because I can do this, because it's a, it's, a, it's a simulator. Okay, now what do I do? Okay, um, passenger briefing performed. You did not have your briefing, sir. Seatbelts. Look at those seatbelts. There's your headset. You're kind of sitting on it, but I'll let you do you. There's a fire extinguisher here behind your seat. Uh, please do not talk to me while I am taxiing, taking off, or landing, because I will choke you the fuck out. Excuse my language, but I am very adamant about that. Okay, so how about you just sit there and be quiet? <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I'm an idiot. So, controls are free and correct. Fuel shutoff valve. I actually fly the Diamond uh, Diamond 20 C1 Eclipse. Uh, this is the Aerosoft Diamond 20 Katana. Um, so, the fuel shutoff valve in the uh, C1 Eclipse is actually right underneath this right underneath this panel here, underneath the, altim or the transponder there. Uh, however, I don't know if the Katana actually has one, but in this particular aircraft it does not uh, propeller spree speed controller lever max 
its max. Uh, avionics master switch off. I don't care what that says. I like to turn it on. Our flight plan is loaded. So there's that. Turn our radio on and transponder to alt. Gyros are spinning up. Master battery switch on. Generator warning light illuminated. Hey, oh, hey, now you should hear, be able to hear me through the headset. As long as you're still not sitting on yours there. So, generator and fuel warning lights. Fuel pressure white. Fuel pressure warning light illuminated. Generator warning light illuminated. Canopy warning light illuminated. We'll take care of that right now by shutting the canopy. Wow. Okay, so that's shut. Canopy light is off. We'll push it. Good. And we are on the next page to starting our engine. So ones are still ones. Winds are still one six nine at six knots. Uh, we're going to turn our fuel pump on. The only thing we have to tune into ATIS for is so that we can get our our, uh, our uh, Jesus our weather information. So we'll go ahead. Fuel pump on. Fuel warning light should be off. I think I just saw it go off. Yep. Okay. Throttle idle. Um, I actually just flew half an hour ago and it's 69 degrees, so we are not cold. I don't have to push it an inch forward. Uh, choke. We don't need the choke. Tow brakes hold. We'll shout propeller area clear. Ignition key to start. Um, I'm not going to ruin the battery or anything. Actually, I probably should put the mags on. There's that. Uh, don't need the choke. Throttle. We'll put the throttle up to 1,000 RPM after we start the engine. Oil pressure within the green arc after 10 seconds. Uh, exterior lights as required, and we'll turn the fuel pump off. So let's go ahead and clear left. No one. Clear right. No one. Straight ahead. No one. Clear prop. And three, two, one. Clear. There we go. Now I tell you what. In um. Uh, I fly out of what used to be Premier Flight Academy in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. It is now Zone Aviation. They sold whatever blah, 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 I'm just going to blab on it. Anyways, uh, flying the Diamond 20, uh, if anyone else has flown the Diamond 20, when you first start flying, I swear to God, it is like, it is the hardest thing to start. Like, I, I just didn't understand why it was so ridiculously hard. You know, I would do everything according to the checklist, and I'd play with the throttle, try to get it you know, so to get some gas and whatnot, it would just sit there and turn over and turn over and turn over, and then my instructor would just move like like he would like move the uh, he would move the mixture knobs and then move the throttle a little bit and it would start right up for him per like a kit. All right, so it started. So we're gonna turn our fuel fuel pump off. Um, strobe light, taxi light. Pretty standard there. Um, generator warning light. Oh, we have to go up to a thousand RPM there. So, we're about a thousand RPM. Generator warning light is off. We're actually going to mess with our trim there. Now, there's one other thing I need to do. Oh, hold on, guys. I'm sorry. Let's turn my engine back off real quick. Because I absolutely hate, hate the left turning tendencies out on this plane. So just like an aileron, when you, uh, on the right side, when the right aileron goes up, the plane turns to the right. Well, with the left turning, with the left turning tendency of the spiral, spiraling slipstream, P factor, don't really have to worry about gyro gyroscopic precession. And I think I'm missing one, but you get the point. Um... What did I do there? Yeah, so hopefully that'll correct for it. It'll uh, deflect into the wind. Hopefully it'll keep me level because I hate the left turning tendencies on this thing. So let's start the engine back up. Um, sorry about that, guys. All right, clear left, clear right, clear straight, clear prop. There we go. I love that whine. Okay, so I have to go up to. We're at 1,000 RPM. Generator warning light is off. Uh, we're going to check oil pressure. Uh, oil pressure... Am I not? Oh, sorry. Oil pressure. 
in the green oil temperature is not up there yet the voltmeter exhaust temperature um, amps are good we're completely loaded on fuel oil like I said I pre-flighted I took care of all that and manifold temperature cool um, GPS is loaded we're going to tune our ATIS go to 12525 just to get the information Tango, cool. And then one two one niner for ground. Set our altimeter there. Not altimeter. Transponder to uh, VFR flight. I am sorry. I am off, man. I'll tell you what. <coughs> all right. So exterior lights as required. We have all that. Oil pressure is in the green. We are Gucci. Avian Ox Master switch on. We already did that. Flight instruments and radio set. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. Wow, that's not good at all. I need to get our altimeter. Be bad if we were off a couple hundred feet. What was our t altimeter? Don't ever forget your altimeter. Temperature 2-2. Temperature 2-2. Alright. Done with you. Be gone. Okay. Sorry, I just feel like it's dragging on here. Alright, I'm just trying to get everything moving so we can start moving. Uh, altimeter 3011. Is it already set? I might already have it set from earlier if the altimeter didn't change. Oh, no, I did not change it. So, 3011. Cool. We're at 584 feet here at Burke Lakefront. The runway we'll be taking off from is, uh, we're taking off from 24 right, which is 6,604 feet long. Absolutely, uh, Absolutely enough uh, space for us to take off. All right, we're set. Um, after we take off here, we're gonna contact Cleveland Departure so we can get flight following. Uh, the only thing we have to watch out for here on the runways is there's a bird and deer hazard, and watch out for ship and vessel masses in the harbor and stay clear of 3,000 feet. As for that is. Uh, Cleveland Hopkins Bravo airspace at 3,000 feet. All right, so let's go ahead and contact ground. We'll head south, and we'll, we will get out of here. To the south, is that five? All right. Good afternoon, Lakefront Ground, Diamond 373 Alpha Mike, with information Tango, ready to taxi for south departure. Diamond November 373 Alpha Mike. Taxi 2 and hold short, runway 24 left, via Golf Echo, contact tower on 124.3 when ready. Okay, before taxi, we did that. Alright, yeah, okay, so taxiing, oh, we need to set our compass. And then I promise you guys, we will not lag here anymore. Okay, we will, we will get the, the wind in our hairs. That is so off, holy crap. Okay, so are we good? We're good. All right, canopy is closed. Closed and locked. We're good. And all right, doing pretty good. Let's get out of here. We'll do our do our uh, brake test here. And brake. Now one thing that I do like about, uh, actually probably all planes, are the differential brakes. So I can just start moving a little bit here, and then just turn the airplane right in its own vicinity there. Still kind of practicing with the taxiing, it's, I mean even in real life it's just, it's ridiculous for me here. 
So we're going to pull this up here so I can get my ground speed up there. Okay. So we are on the move, heading to Youngstown 1, uh, flying 120 down there. Get on the taxiway here. Alright. Okay, let's see if it'll stay straight for us or if we're going to have to uh, correct it. I mean, we do have, uh, do have a wind that's kind of coming from our right, our right side. Wow, 10 knots, that's fast for taxi. I don't want to prop, prop strike, strike prop, what, you know, whatever, I can't talk, alright, don't judge me. I don't, I don't know what to talk about right now, um, keep talking about the flight, um, Youngstown Warren sits at 1,192 feet, um, if you want to know some more information, we're going to tune into the ATIS about 10 miles out of the airport, ATIS is 12375, get their reading, We'll call uh, Youngstown Tower, get clearance to land, and uh, we, we definitely have enough fuel. Uh, fuel burn is about 6 gallons per hour in the Diamond 20. And uh, we have 24 gallons of usable fuel. And we're flying 117 miles. I, I, I messed up my E6B flight computer. I can't remember what the... How, oh, we have four hours of fuel. That's right, we have four hours of fuel. Okay, so we'll be good. Why does it look like we're going so fast? Now it looks like we're going slow. That looks fast. It looks like we're flying down the taxiway. I feel like I'd be getting yelled at right now. That trim tab seems to really be working, though. I tell you what. Alright, they actually just put in a new hangar over here. Uh, uh, it's called Signature Flight, Signature Aviation, something like that. It's a new business. Um, well, I hope you know, I'm coming down the runway. Oh, that's going to be one of those things where the controller tells them to move and then stop and then move and then stop. I hate that. So, basically, uh, the runways there at uh, Youngstown are uh, runway 14, runway 32, runway 05, and runway 23. Um, with the wind, I believe he'll have us probably fly straight into runway 14. It's 9,003 foot long. It's an asphalt runway. They do have fuel if we needed it, but we do not. Um, they actually have another runway there too. Uh, runway 143 and 323, which are actually military assault uh, strip. And if we needed them for an emergency, it'd be 3,501 feet long, which would be be good, but it'd be scary. Um, we don't have to, uh, no obstructions going into the airport there, so that'll be good. Um, <coughs> it is Delta airspace, so we need our two-way communication and clearance, and then VFR uh, visibility and cloud clearance, so 300 statue miles. Hello, Pipers, how you guys doing? No, 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 there's two of them there? Jesus. Okay. Anyways. November five eight two two three taxi to parking. Cypress November five eight two two three taxi to general aviation parking. Using taxi to Delta Golf. Taxiing to general aviation parking. Using taxiway Delta Golf. Cypress two two three. All right. So we're about to be turning on the taxiway. This is such a long freaking taxi. I, I will tell you too, uh, actual flying time from general av aviation parking down there at gate 2 all the way down to taxi taxiway echo down here 
it is a long 10 to 15 minute taxi depending on what the winds are doing and oh and you, you you're in a plane you don't want to just sit on the ground the whole time i mean i hate taxiing more than anything so it's just a drag to just be sitting there 15 minutes but you got to keep you, you got to pay attention because there's a lot of things that actually happen on the taxiway especially when you're not paying attention so even though I hate it, still gotta pay attention to it like I love it. It's like school when you were in high school, you know? That's a bad example for me. I mean, I didn't, I didn't do too well in high school. But the things I did care about in high school, that didn't even... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna stop talking about stuff sometimes, you know? Alright, this Echo. Cool. We are actually... As long as there's no one else coming down the runway here. Or a taxiway. I don't think there's anyone coming down the taxiway. So if there's no one else coming down the taxiway, okay, we're just going to sit right here and do our run-up then. Alright, so we'll set our parking brake. Parking brake set fuel pump we were supposed to turn off but I left it on big whoop um safety belts fast and put on your damn seat belt <laughs> sorry uh canopy closed and locked uh cool we are locked 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 um fuel quantity indicator fuel warning light uh we are I think we're good on our fuel quantity I think I already checked that yeah we're in between three quarter and full uh, engine gauge is all in the green. Green. Uh, oil temperature is now up. Uh, oil pressure is good. Volts are good. Exhaust temperature. I'm, I, yeah, the exhaust temperature is good. Amps. And manifold pressure. That'll go up as we increase uh, throttle there. But we don't have to worry about that right now. We'll check it later on in flight. And, okay, I think we're ready for the actual run-up part. So elevator trim neutral. We set that. Aerosoft Diamond uh, DA20. Neutral is not neutral. You leave it at neutral, it's nose high attitude. Okay. Propeller control level lever. Cycle three times. So one, two, three. That's just to make sure that it's working properly. Um, so we'll put the throttle up to 1700 RPMs and then we will do the magneto test which you should see a drop in the magnetos of about 50 to 100 RPM. Um, both magnetos, and then we'll do a carb heat drop, which you turn on the carb heat, should drop 50 RPM, turn it back on, goes back up. Um, turn the carb heat back off, circuit breakers are all pressed in, fuel pumps on, flaps take off, and then we'll contact tower. So let's go ahead and run our RPMs up to 1,700 RPM. All right. And I should see a drop in the RPM there. Drop. 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 I didn't really see a drop, but it's just a... It's a simulator, people. Yeah. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and pull the carp heat on. I'm going to do it so you guys can see the RPMs drop. That's all I want. Okay, pull the carp heat out. Did you see a drop? I don't think I did. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Alright, carb heat. I think I saw... Oh, I see a drop there. You see that drop? Look at that. Put it back up. Put it back up. Let's test that one more time. Oh, there's a drop. There's a little drop. Alright, cool. So the run-up is good. Uh, we'll check all our instruments, make sure we're good. Manifold pressure, oil pressure, uh, oil temperature, the volts, the exhaust, uh, amps, and fuel. So we are good to go. Um, turn our fuel pump on, circuit breakers in, car heat is back off. Go back to idle. We'll set our flaps to take off there. All right, so let's go ahead and start on moving. And we'll also, oh wait, you know what else we should do? 
First off, we should probably take off the parking brake, but we should also uh, tune in our tower here. So actually, our next, uh, I think it's one three five two five. Uh, just in case, I'm not gonna put it in yet. We'll go ahead and contact tower and uh, get our clearance to take off here. I know this is kind of dragging a little bit, but we have to make sure we do everything right. Ain't that right? Nah, that was bad. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Taxi light off. Landing light on. Alright. Fuel pump is on. Uh, so we are actually going to climb at our best climb rate with the Diamond DA20, which will be 70 knots. VX. Um, okay, let's go ahead and contact Tower and get our clearance. I'm going to stop talking here. Lake Front Tower, good afternoon. Diamond 373 Alpha Mike at Echo, runway 24 left, ready for south departure. Diamond November 373 Alpha Mike, cleared for takeoff, runway 24 left, departure to the south, approved. Clear for takeoff, runway 24 left, Diamond 373 Alpha Mike. Okay, look left, look right, no traffic in sight. And we will start rolling onto the runway and then we will. Roll on our throttle here to get moving. So flaps set to take off. Uh, fuel pump is on. Carpet off, flaps take off, max propeller lever. Direction control maintain with rudder. And all right, so after we take off, we will, uh... oh, well, that was awful, guys. Like I said before, I, I apologize. Probably making you nervous. Alright, let's go ahead and roll on our throttle here. And fuel pump off after we get off the ground. And coming up on 57 knots. And rotating. Alright. Get some altitude and then we'll get rid of our flaps and uh, turn off our fuel pump. Alright, and we'll turn that fuel pump off. And we'll go ahead and climb. Climb, 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 climb. I wouldn't use those red numbers up there if it was easier to see the gauges. Alright, but I'm a cheap, alright? Alright, we're going to come out over the lake here. Still climbing, we're going to climb to about 2,000 feet. I don't like to get any any closer to Bravo airspace because I don't want to buzz their towers and piss them off. I know the engine's kind of loud, I'm sorry. All right. Okay, we're going to fly over the lake here. So we are now, uh, we have actually a right quartering headwind that's actually coming into us. We're going to turn into that. How about that? Take that wind. How do you like that? Okay, 
So we're going to make our right turn now that we're past the airfield and start heading on course. We're going to actually intersect our course line and we'll turn back at a heading of 120. Cleveland and the rest of Ohio. Okay. And we'll get rid of some power there. Trim it up a little bit till we get outside of Bravo airspace. This is where I'm staying because I am not gonna buzz their airspace there. So we're about uh, we're about to intersect our course line and we will make a. Uh, Make a left turn to our course, and we're going to start looking out for for our, our first waypoint, which is 422 West, uh, approximately 20 miles out. I, I, I have it on a piece of paper, but I can't really flip it right now. Alright, so we are 120. I really wish this thing had elevator trim, guys. You have no idea. A little bit of power here because we're kind of losing altitude. I don't want to get too low here. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, have a good day. All right, we're going to contact Cleveland Departure and request flight following. Cleveland Departure, Diamond 373 Alpha Mike, is type Diamond, uh, six miles south of Brick Lakefront, requesting flight following. Diamond November 373 Alpha Mike, Cleveland Departure, Squawk 0215. Squawk 0215, Diamond 3 Alpha Mike. Bomber 81. Copy, thank you very much. Diamond 373 off of Mike. Diamond 3 Alpha Mike. Traffic is more close. All right, Jesus Christ. Let's see, can we see them out there? I think they're going to be blocked by our uh, canopy there. All right, they're not, they're, it's no factor. Okay. So. Diamond 373 Alpha Mike, no factor. Okay. Now, Burke Lakefront ceiling, uh, not Burke Lakefront, Hopkins uh, airspace ceiling, that outer ring we're passing through, if you look on the GPS, that raises to 4,000 feet there. So we could climb, but I'm going to stay here until we get to our outer ring. And we should see 422 coming up here pretty soon. Um, so... Yeah, alright. We're actually veering off course too, because, uh, you know. First waypoint right there, 422. 
373 off, I'm going to have the traffic in sight, no factor. Oh, we are way off course, Jesus. Okay, so, 422. Uh, actually, that was our first waypoint there. We already passed our first waypoint at 422. So now, this is our second waypoint on there. I think our second waypoint was 422 actually snaking through. Okay, and our other waypoint was that lake off to our left, so there's, well, that river. Oh, Diamond 373 Alpha Mike, have a uh, Beach Baron in sight, thank you. There he is. There you are, I see you! Okay, so, let's, uh, I'm going to do a wind correction angle here now, since our, uh, our winds have changed. We're 186 at 14 knots. Grab the E6B there, so we'll go to 186. We had 100 knots. I hate this thing veers like that. Where's my pets? 14 knots. And we are flying a course of 118. At about 110 knots. I guess we're actually doing 100 knots, just leave it there. Alright, so our ground speed is now 95 knots, right? Yep. 95 knots. And a wind correction angle of 2467 degrees. So we are actually now going to be flying. Uh, one two five. Contact one two five. All right, now we can make our climb to twenty five hundred feet too. On a five thousand five hundred. At a climb rate of seventy. 70 knots there. Check our engine gauges. Um, we look good. Uh, 
Alright, and we're going to keep looking out for our second waypoint. Um, our second waypoint is that little... Not our second, our third waypoint. I think that was the river I was talking about. Not that one back there. I didn't see that one. But that little one right there is our other waypoint off to our, off to our left wing. So that is our third waypoint there. Our fourth waypoint should be 422 coming back around. So, not sure what that is. But that is not 422. And we need to seriously get on course here. So we are going to fly heading of 160 until we get back on course here. And we still need to climb. What's wrong with me? Oh, I'm sorry, you know what, 57 knots is our, uh, no, 70 knots is our best climb, right? Yeah. Alright, so if you notice, as we, uh, as we ascend here, uh, P factor takes the most effect on the left turning tendencies in a climb. And also, we're about to stall if we keep doing what we're doing. All right, we'll take a left turn back to one, two, five, and that is our fourth waypoint right there. That is Auburn Airport. Flying directly over. We want to approach Cessna November 801 Niner 7 with you. Cessna November 801 Niner 7, please let us approach. Roger. Altimeter 3012. I should have been at 5,500 feet. Um, I should have been at 5,500 feet right after I got out of Hopkins there. Uh, that's what it says on the flight plan. God forbid I crashed back there. So we're now at 5,000 feet. 500 more feet and we can level off. Wind is now 21425. Keep on a one two five heading. Actually, that's not going to work. We're going to have to adjust our heading. So back to the E six B. One more time. What is it again? It is two one four. Two one four at twenty five knots. Jesus, oh man, go twenty five knots on there. Orbit four jet nine or five and eighteen one one thousand. Four four Papa, turn left Okay, and then at a speed of where is it, 80 knots indicated? Jesus. So correction angle of 9 degrees, so now we are flying 129. That's where we need to be. Jesus. Be on course there. So one two niner, and a ground speed of about seventy five knots, which is ridiculous. That's what the GPS should say, right? Ground speed ninety one knots. I did something wrong. Turn left heading one five zero. Turn left heading one five zero. That's the one niner seven. 
Alright, so now we are uh, looking for our next waypoint here. Our next waypoint, that is, I keep talking about 422, but our next waypoint is 422. Okay, and I believe that is 422 right beneath us there. I'm going to show you my calculations here. Indicated airspeed of... Oh, that's, that's why. Okay, indicated airspeed of, let's say, 83 knots. Okay. My pencil bag. So we'll put you... Let's put you at 100 for now. We need to lose altitude. We're getting a bit high there. Okay, 100 knots. It is 25. Oh, 214. We put a true index there. So 214. 25 knots. Okay. And then we will go to our heading of 118. And then our indicated airspeed is... Oh, that's our last ground speed. That's what we want to put it on. 93 knots. We want to put it on 93 knots, that little dot we just made. A wind correction angle of 16 degrees? Oh man, what's 118 plus 116? It's 128 plus 6, we need 134. Alright. 134 and it says our ground speed... Alright, yeah, ground, sp ground speed is dead even with our... Uh, Indicated airspeed. It's about to be. Anyways. So now we are finally at altitude. We're in between 5,000 and 6,000. Uh, we're actually going to drop a little more here. <laughs> so we are flying 135. And we have that wind that's coming up on our, uh, coming up on, what's that wind? 215. Yeah, that wind's coming from our right. Hitting us. Ooh, do a little slippage. Alright. I'll take another check of our instruments here. Actually, we gotta look up for our next waypoint. Don't forget about your waypoint. I don't know if we'll be able to see it. Should be a be a windmill. Are we gonna be able to see it on here? Should be off to the right side. Just do a little little less turn there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not seeing it. But, let's pray to God. I mean, our GPS is working, so I know we're going the right way, but I don't like not being able to check my waypoints there. <laughs> we have one departure. That's November 3433 Bravo. This climbing is 1500 for 8000. That's November 3433 Bravo. Please land departure. Roger. Control Commander 3013. That's that 6 vectors ILS runway an instrument check manifold pressure RPMs RPMs automatically always go to that I swear to god this it's just not realistic with that regardless I'm done complaining about that engine uh 
exhaust temperature cool. Volts good, oil pressure good. Uh, kind of poking into the yellow there, but it's normal. Uh, oil temperature, voltage, and gasoline. We are good. Let's, uh, 19 more miles to go. That should be the airport right in front of us then, with the lake off to the left side there. See that lake? And that tent. God damn it. Turning tendency. <coughs> so, right before we get into their airspace there, we're actually going to tune their ATIS, which is 12375. Uh, so, 1, 2, 3, 7, 5. Okay. Five o'clock at four miles, three thousand. Five o'clock, I'm not gonna be able to see him. He stays there, he's fine though. Diamond 3, uh, 73 Alpha Mike, I have the de Havilland in sight, no factor, thank you. Alright, so we have our climb, we climb, we're cruising. Uh, do we ever turn our fuel pump off? Okay, I was gonna burn up those fuel injectors and leave those on. Okay, descent, flight instrument set, propeller level, lever. Carb heat as required, we're good on that. Landing approach. Okay. Alright, let's go ahead and tune Youngstown, Youngstown's ATIS. The weather information. Youngstown, airport information is Mike. 2000. Seatbelts fastened, put your damn seatbelt on there. Uh, fuel pump is on, we'll turn that on for a descent. Sorry, that's annoying. I had to cancel our flight following, Jesus, I hope he doesn't try to give me anything. <coughs> Cleveland departure, Diamond 373 Alpha Mike, cancel flight following. Diamond 3 Alpha Mike, Cleveland Squawk 1200 for Diamond 373 Alpha Mike. Thank you very much, ma'am. Have a wonderful day. Okay, let's get our uh, 1200 ident. There we go. Let's get our 1200 ident. There we go. Alright, where are we heading? I know we're not. We're way off course there. How's the airport at? We should see the airport, right? Well, maybe if I was heading the right way. So we have the ATIS. Did I infor information Romeo, right? Oh, I have to listen to that damn thing again. Airport information is Mike. What? Mike. Mike. Okay. <coughs> so there is our final waypoint. Right there, that lake. Just make sure we're still on good there. So let's go ahead and contact Youngstown Tower on 1195. I'm just going to go ahead and do that here. 
to... Where are you at, Youngstown Warren? You're farther away from me, are you serious? Seven, right? So, all right, Youngstown Warren. Youngstown Tower, we tuned the ADA, sorry to talk to the ADA, so let's request full stop. Youngstown Tower, uh, Tower Diamond 373 Alpha Mike is 11 miles northwest at 4,200 inbound to land. I'm in November 373 Alpha Mike, Youngstown Tower, fly straight in, runway 14, altimeter 3015. Make straight in, runway uh, 14, Diamond 373 Alpha Mike, thank you. Alright, yeah, so I uh, kind of figured with the winds they were going to have us fly into runway 14 there, so we have a clearance to land, and actually I think I see uh, the indicators right there. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's the indicators. So, cool. We know we, where we are going. We no longer have to uh, correct for wind or any of that. Well, we have to correct for wind. But it's not as important now that I can see the airport, you know? So, well, that's another airport, isn't it? No, it's just grassland. We can give it a little bit of power. We're actually going to go back to full... Uh, However, back to full there, and uh, a little bit of gas. <laughs> so we are going to runway one four, which is nine thousand three feet long. It's their longest runway, runway one four and three two. So that's cool. It's a left traffic pattern, but we have to enter straight. Makes it easy for us. So our uh, propeller lever, lever, that's so hard for me to say, I'm like, I don't know what's wrong. Uh, it's maxed out, airspeed, uh, as we are on approach, we'll slow down to 81 knots, and then we'll put in our first flap of, first notch of flaps. <coughs> um, and as we get about a mile away from the runway, half a mile, we'll put in our second flap, second notch of flaps. Trim, we'll trim out there, throttle as required, I think we're good. Um, yeah. Oh, I know what this guy's gonna have me do. He is gonna have me go around. I know it. He's gonna have, or he's gonna have, yeah, he's probably gonna make me go around. Also, I'm gonna get down to 2,500 feet because I don't like being at 3,000 feet heading west. So we are gonna drop like a fly. We're gonna get out of 3,000 actually real quick. Okay. I'm in three Alpha Mike, clear to land, runway one four. Follow the aircraft on final. Follow the aircraft on final, clear to land, runway one four, down three seven three Alpha Mike. All right. So yep, that is our runway one four right there. Uh, we're actually coming. Right here is runway. 1, 4, and then going this way is runway 2, 3, and runway 0, 5, and actually directly parallel about, uh, I'm not going to even give you the distance, because I don't know, but parallel to runway 1, 4 that we'll be landing is that military assault strip that I'm talking about, and my goodness, I'm at a dangerous altitude, because I'm heading west, to get back up to 2,500. Okay, we're at 81 knots. Uh, I'm not putting in my flaps yet. Are you crazy? Be at 2,500 feet. These mistakes that I'm making in here, the altitude and all that stuff, wouldn't happen in real life. I promise you. It's too dangerous. Especially now that I don't have flight following. That's just, just stupid of me to fly that, fly at uh, even altitude heading west there. Heading west, heading west. I feel like I repeated myself, like I'm obsessed with heading west, heading west. Okay, so go down to 81 knots, get in the white arc there on our uh, 
airspeed indicator, and we'll put in our first notch of flaps. Where's that aircraft on final? Because I'm not seeing him anymore. Is he already on the uh, runway there? Yeah, he's just landed. So. Alright, cool. Makes it good for us. So we can go ahead and put in our second notch of flaps. A little bit of go go juice. <coughs> Actually, we're going to take away some go go juice. We're a little high. And we actually have that wind blowing straight at us, so that's nice. Come on, go go juice, go away. Orbit four two minor contact ground on one two one point minor. One two one point minor. Orbit four two minor. Power for altitude. Start losing power. Should hear the stall warning kick on in a second here. Whee! Okay, we're gonna turn to the left here, correct? Yeah, we're gonna turn to the left on Hotel One and go down uh, Taxiway Hotel there. But he'll tell me obviously. One two one niner for Diamond Three Seven Three Alpha Mike. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Uh, Youngstown Ground Diamond Three Seven Three Alpha Mike at Hotel One. Request taxi to park. Diamond November Three Seven Three Alpha Mike. Taxi to General Aviation Parking using Taxiway Hotel One Papa Charlie Hotel Delta. Uh, come on, acknowledge. All right, taxi to General Aviation Parking via Taxiway Hotel One, Papa Charlie Hotel, Delta, Diamond 373, Alpha Mike, thank you very much. Okay, so after landing, throttles required, flaps up. Uh, car beat off, fuel pump off. There we are. Uh, maybe we'll get in our... Uh